All right, everybody, welcome to Sigil Session 6. Our adventurers are in a cottage that just got shot by a cannonball. So everyone rolled initiative. And off in the distance, right from where that cannonball shot from, you hear a voice of a young woman yell out. All right, you can either one, surrender and give us all your shit. Or two, you can die and we can take all your shit. Which ones will it be? I say we surrender. Same. Tip it up right now. I say I'm back. <laughs> we have no idea what we're doing. I refuse to surrender. I wake up like, huh? huh? <laughs> <laughs> I've had a long enough day already. <laughs> I'm ready for some rest. Like the yelling did. <laughs> That's relatable, honestly. Mm -hmm. Is that your choices? <laughs> we have, wait, should, we, should, we, should we leave it to a vote? Should we take a vote? Three, two, one. And then you just hear this lady snap a finger. And I want Brian and Sabrina to give me a perception check. Uh oh. I'm I got a 20. Both of you for sure see this. Where that cannonball starts to move. Uh -oh. And you see it start to expand a bit. And you see a face form on it. And you can see to where it looks like it's a smiling face like upside down its eyes go below the face to where it looks like it's smiling now and you get a golem you get a good old clay golem right there oh. huh? oh, this big. Is it four spots? oh yeah it expanded <laughs> the big cannonball and you, um, you see Oliver just sigh, and he said these are the Misery Sisters, a bunch of sadistic sisters that would like to steal shit in the Feywild, and they have their own pirate crew with a walking pirate ship. Uh, we might not make it out of this one. And Mr. Sleeves is the first... To like walk up he says i don't see the big deal about you know uh play like golem of source i mean it's like nothing really I've seen plenty of them before and sadistic sisters whatever and the moment you say it you hear him say that <laughs> he gets hit with a trident in the chest, and he gets stuck to the wall. Oh my God. He fling, he gets flung all the way back here, and he gets electrocuted. That's, that's Mr. Bad. Sleeves is down. He got Jesus Christ. Mr. Sleeves is down. He has no health points. He's knocked unconscious, and you see the trident disappear into the darkness. So Mr. Sleeves is just like stuck to the wall by blood, basically. Wow. Well, I guess they chose for us. Early. Why'd you kill him off? He's not dead. He just has no hit points and he's unconscious. So. Right. It's now Calandrus' turn. Is there like a hole here? 
There is a big two space hole right there, yes. You could, if you wanted to, you could uh, pop out from the door right there and hit him from the uh, side. With my arrows, you didn't wreck the long snap. <laughs> And you move uh, where you want to. Uh, do what you need to do. You are the first to act. So what would you like to do, Jelander? Uh, I'm gonna try to pick up Mr. Sleeves. Pick him up? Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah, I mean, you can do that if you want. And then put him... here. You're gonna move with- are you gonna stay beside him and move with him? Yeah. I'm gonna- how much, uh... What's your walking speed? I've got, like... I got a bonus the first turn. Mm -hmm. ten, bit, 10 bit bonus, and then I can use my key line to, to double that speed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah. 70. 70. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Uh, move yourself uh, over there, and then I'll move Mr. Sleeves over there as well. And then I'm gonna use my hand crossbow to um, Okay. Twenty six to hit. Twenty six to hit, let's just double check. You hit him, yes. Eight points with that. You hit him, this clay golem, but as soon as that arrow meets the clay, it just sinks in and you don't see any damage that appears to be dealt to him. Is that it for your turn? I'm gonna try to ask Oliver if he can do that. some enchantment for my arrows. <laughs> uh, he said, uh, I'll, I'll think of something. <laughs> yeah, then, yeah, that's my thing. All right. Uh, you hear out from again the darkness. Uh, you hear a lady call out for Esmeralda to make quick work. But she says it's going to take a minute, so that's all you hear for now. And now it's the Clay Golem's turn. Ah, uh, lovely. This big boy is going to have a big day. And he looks at the... You know what? I'm just going to do this for you. We're going to roll... We're going to flip a coin. This Golem... Looks right towards Aidwin, steps right through the hole that's gaping, and its head is like already like it has to like crunch over because of the roof. So it's just looking down at you in this bad Aidwin, and it will try to attack you. What is your your armor class is twelve, correct? Without your armor. So he grabs you off the bed by your torso. Its hand just molds around your torso and slams you twice down into the bed, breaking the bed, and you get dealt 15 points of bludgeoning damage. 
<laughs> None of the damage is dampened by the bed. Like, it's soft, right? Sure <laughs> isn't. <laughs> they don't have good mattresses in the Feywild. So. Now I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw. <sighs> okay, dropped. <laughs> Ooh, got real lucky. I'm constitution. You have constitution. That, he still has you in his grasp, and you're just being held to the ground now in this debris of bed. <laughs> and that's the end of the clay golem, certain. What the hell was the roll for if I'm still... <laughs> And you see Oliver go, well, I, I, I guess this is uh, it. And you see Oliver just like look around at what's happening right now. And he knows what's coming. And he suggests everyone uh, try to spread out because some stuff is going to happen in this little house that might not make it a house anymore. And he pulls... Hmm. He's going to cast... Snapping Sting on this golem. See how much that'll do for. It only does three points of damage, but that's still something. That's his action, and then for his movement, he's just gonna go right over here. And he's going to be on the lookout for that side. That's the end of his turn, and we go to Mr. Sleeves, who's going to do a death saving throw. Let's see what he's got. He succeeds one, so he's got one success. He's not dying yet. That is the end of his, and Og, you're up. All right, um, I walk over here mm -hmm. and then try to peer through the hole to see if I could see anything on the other side. Give me a perception check. All right. Oh, I think it's the first one. I accidentally clicked it twice. Uh, 21. 21 out the window you see just enough over here it's about as far as you can see but you also He's someone that isn't supposed to be there. In theory, I don't think anyone's supposed to be there. No one's supposed to be anywhere. No one's supposed to be anywhere. True. True. Where, where, where is that person that is not supposed to be there? It would just appear here in a second. And then um, for my action, I'm going to go ahead and cast, uh, what do you call it, Circle of Spores as my action. And so mm -hmm. now, basically, if anyone gets within 10 feet of me, I can choose to have them, what do you call it, attacked by Circle of Spores. Yep. All right. And th that is my total action. For that special moment. 
that's uh, it for your turn? Yeah, that's it. You see the captain of the Misery Sisters, Captain Callista Misery. This dark blue, almost purplish tiefling who has a trident in her hand and in the other hand is a tentacle. Her other hand is a tentacle or her other hand is holding a tentacle? Is a tentacle. Oh, it is a tentacle. Okay, got it. And that trident is covered in Mr. Sleeve's blood. Brilliant. Alright. That's the end of your turn. Uh, Belgeron, you're up. You got Clay Monster, Grappling Aidwin, and then you have seen the Captain of the Misery Sisters. Uh... Guess I'll attack the uh, the clay golem. Is it a creature? It is a construct. What are you trying to uh, figure out about it? Uh, if I can get a bonus attack on it, because yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Go for it. Uh, so I'll take a violent shot at it. Mm-hmm. How'd I roll it? How do you roll a violent shot? Yeah, do I just regular roll a regular shot? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get a plus two to the um, each grip point so that if the attack hits, you can roll one additional weapon die. So you just roll one more damage to it. Twelve. Uh, yeah. It goes right through this clay golem and it looks like it hurts a, just a little bit. But... Every bit counts. It's a little bit. Jeez. Yeah, where where would you be? Would you be aiming it at its arm, torso, head, legs? Right for the head. Right for the head. It just passes through, or like right through its mouth, and it looks like it's chewing on him now. Still kind of hurts. Terminator. Would that be it for yours? Yeah. Sabrina, it's up to you now. Hello. So I seem to be between a rock and a hard place right now. Mm -hmm. So let's well, see what my options are. It's not paying. I will say it's not paying attention to you. It's currently it currently got shot in the face and then it's holding Aidwin on a bed, well, on the remnants of a bed. So, yeah. your your options are you can try to squeeze by it if you want, or you can fight it, or you can try to break through the wall. Uh... Let's see. Um... This is kind of tough. Mm -hmm. uh, what if would a mall be effective against like a clay golem? Would is your mall magical? Is what I need to know. Uh, as far as I know, no. But I can enchant it to be magical, like set it on fire. You could, yeah, you could try that. That doesn't sound like a good idea, though. Clay plus fire. 
If it's fun, I mean, think of what happens to clay when it's on fire or gets it burnt. It turns solid, right? That could be helpful. Okay. So I guess I will um, use a spell. Mm -hmm. I think it's Searing Smite, right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to use Searing Smite. Uh, I roll a four for that. Mm hmm And then I model it. Uh, shoot, I rolled an eight to hit it. That eight surprisingly misses it. You just hit the, like, frame of the door. That's you probably can... not good with a fire thing. But, um... Well, we're gonna roll something for you then, real quick. Just gonna see how this goes. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, the door frame starts to catch on fire now. You did so, this to me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. You're the one that uh, missed and hit the door frame. I blame is, you. <laughs> is that the end of your turn? Yes. All right. Aid Wait, is it? Oh, you can go ahead. Um, what'd you like to do or say or what ask? What else can I do? You can move if you want. Um. If you want to move past the scallum and try to get away, I will let you do it, but you have to do a dexterity check for me. Okay, let's do a dexterity check. Um, All right. I am doing that right now. I rolled a six. You, your foot <laughs> gets stuck in this golem's foot and it starts to sink in a little bit. <laughs> so you're right there with it. I hate this. That's the end of your turn, so Aidwin, let's go buddy. You're currently being grappled by a golem uh, you sort of see something on fire. The bed is on top of you, which it should not be. And you just hear a bunch of, like, random shit going on. And Mr. Sleeves might be dead? Who knows? Cool. Um, what does it take to get out of a grapple? Street check. Is it just a check, or would that count for my action? I'm gonna say... I'm going to say you can do it. I'm just going to let you do this. You had an 11. All right, you got to go against this, guys. So let's see who's stronger. You slide out of this golem's grasp. It's probably due to it worried about fire being there, and it looks visibly worried, and then also having a person stuck inside of its foot. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, now that I'm out, I kind of like... I guess my armor would be like next to me, so I just like s spin around and like grab my my case with my armor and, pfft, and like flip it on and like my gauntlets go on and, and the helmet and whatnot. Mm hmm. Holy crap, I have armor class now. Ooh. Okay. Um. So, if I'm guessing, like, because uh, it got hit with, like, a bunch of damage, it has not been really been taking any da damage from these weapons. Nope. It took a um, little bit from the violent shot, and it took a little bit from the thing that Oliver did. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, my my gauntlets do do thunder damage, so I'm gonna try to punch it. Is that force damage? Is thunder damage force? Actually, you know what? Never mind, because the the regular damage is force. Mm -hmm. You can still try it. But it's thunder. Oh, one second. I'll just I'll just roll damage and see what it says on the thing. Thunder. Seven. Well, I'm just I'm just seeing if it shows what kind of damage it was when I roll it. Mm -hmm. Because each of God, it says a creature has a. It deals 1d8 thunder damage on a hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see if I'll you uh, can hit it. I'll try to punch it. <coughs> okay, ooh, ha, oh, ooh. Okay. You get a nat 20? Is that what you just got? Yes. Damn, All right, double your damage. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, does it do automatically when I click it? Did it? Yeah, and dude. Oh wait, no, no, that, that was me. That wasn't damage. Nope. Can't mind to that. <laughs> that, was, that was completely wrong. It was a dead. Okay. All right. So you did whatever the uh. The twelve, I guess. Um, uh, you did eighteen damage. Uh... You see, this thing is visibly annoyed with you now, even more so than before. It now has a um, a thing where. Oh wait, no, I did not mean to roll. Oh my god, never mind. Pay no mind to those <laughs> rolls. Um, it has a thing where it uh it has disadvantage when it attacks anyone else but me. Mhm. Mm um. Oh, I have. I have. Do I have an extra attack? I think I have extra attack now. Let me see. You might. Double check. Always good to double check. What I got the last uh, I leveled up. Mm. Yeah, fifth level. Extra attack. Cool. Take it. Alright, I'm just gonna punch him again. Yeah, good. You hit. Oh my god, the damage. And damage. Um thing just feels like pockets of air are just hitting it constantly, and it's not terribly happy about that. So still doesn't look that messed up. Just more annoyed than anything. And scared of the fire. Does not like it. Alright, well, I'm also going to move. Go for it. Over to, like, here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, you're going to move right out in the open where that opening is, where the cannonball right. came through. Yep. Okay. Uh, Create some distance. I'm also gonna use my bonus action to give me some uh, five points of temporary <laughs> hit points. Do it up. You know, so I kind of like power up my armor a bit, and I'm kind of just like holding out my shield, <laughs> kind of like bracing the entrance. Um, all right. That's it. I'm pretty sure that's all I can do. Oliver notices something from where he's peeking out at, moving the woods, but he can't quite tell what it is. He can feel that it's a very unsettling presence, and it's starting to move around the cabin. And now it is the captain's turn. And the captain looks over at Aidwin, who just went right out in the open. And 
the captain will move. Still trying to get some cover just a little bit. And she is going to throw that trident right in Edwin's face. Does an 18 hit you? It does not. An 18? Ooh. Got lucky. She is going to use her bonus action to call it back. And she yells for her sisters to start moving in. And that's going to be the end of her turn. Galandris, you're due up. So I'm going to pick up Sister Isabella. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to pass her past the Sister you're gonna move uh, Mr. Sleeves over where Oliver is? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm gonna. You, if you want, you can give me a perception of the check to see what Oliver. to try to see what Oliver kind of saw. Yes, no. Ooh, you do not see anything. He's like, it's right there. Can you? It's literally right there. Can you see it? And you just see total blackness. Which is weird for you. Because that's. You shouldn't be seeing that. Yeah. Uh. Is that it for your turn, or do you have anything else you want to do? I didn't really do that, so that's my bad. Alright. If, uh, that's it. One of these sisters appears. We'll just pop you right there. See, it's Esmer Esmeralda. She is in a dress. She looks like a trident. She's very aquatic looking. She has these tribal tattoos on, but is in a very fancy dress. And what she is going to do is cast... Let me just make sure this can happen. It certainly can't. So she's going to cast Enlarge on the Golem. I feel like that would have a side effect of also making me larger. Ooh, it sure doesn't. But Isn't it really big? How do you make it bigger? Big now it's bigger. Now the roof is off where that golem is standing because it popped out of the roof. So there's no roof where that golem is at. Good. And um, the leg and foot that you were stuck in, Sabrina, has just grown more onto you. So you're going to have a trouble, more trouble getting out of that. Mm. She cast that and... She, you see her like say something, but none of you can really hear it. And she's going to move. She will move um, back into the darkness a bit. Just enough out of the way. That'll be the end of her turn and... <laughs> It's the golem's turn, and the golem sees this tiny person now stuck to it. So it picks its leg and foot up to where this person is stuck with, and is going to slam it against the wall. Two times. 
you gotta hit both for sure. You take 19 and then 9 bludgeoning damage. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Um, where's that? Uh, okay, I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. I got a 7. You... <laughs> that was the wrong time to get that. You, unfortunately, cannot heal. Your hit point maximum is down by 28 points. So you cannot heal that back until a long rest. So what hit points are you at right now? Sabrina? That would be eight. Oh boy. That's the end of the golem's turn. And it looks quite satisfied of what it's done. Uh, it's now up to Oliver. He will... Hmm. Who will Oliver do? He's going to... Uh, use his hide action. Ooh, he's really hidden. He's hidden from anything that could possibly see it at the moment. And he will move. Right here in this little cart. That's going to be the end of his turn. Mr. Sleeves, it's time to not die, hopefully. Someone should say you know, Mr. Sleeves. He's got now Mr. Sleeves has one success so far. So it's not too he's not in that rough of a shape. So let's see. Oh he Mr. Sleeves has gotten a three, so he has now one death failure. And Galanderus, Belgeron, and Og. I want you to give me all perception checks on Mr. Sleeves. Okay. Uh, shockingly, Og is the only one that sees this, but Mr. Sleeves, this little bully wug, uh, starts to look less like a bully wug. He's gotten a tad bit taller and mm. his features have slimmed down a bit. His hands, his feet have grown a little bit smaller. Mouth is definitely smaller. That's it for him. For his turn. And it is now Ogs. All right. I'm going to move right here. Mm hmm. And then. I am going to cast, um, what do you call it? I'm going to try casting, uh, Chill Touch. Okay. And so, here's the, I think, the, what do you call it? To attack him? Yes. 15. Yeah, 15 hits. All right. And then, so for damage, it should be... Nine damage of necrotic damage. Ooh, okay. He feels that. He certainly feels that. All right. And I will tell you that in symbiotic entity form, your melee attacks do count as magical. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 take on like one d I think or one d six additional uh, necrotic damage if I remember correctly. Oh, so, oh, okay. I can add that. Uh, roll, just roll a d6 for me. Okay, I mean, this wasn't a melee attack. 
right. I mean, chill touch is like a. We're gonna just count that to where you can add that. Okay. I'll just um, roll that. All right, sounds good. And then for a regular attack, it would be the. Where is that? You can just roll a d6 if you want. Yeah. And then we'll just do that. Yeah. Two. two. <laughs> it, it basically is just like you just spit like some spores on him and he's not happy. <laughs> nice. Alright. Is there anything hey. else you'd like to do? Um. Alright, no. I don't think this is really an action, but I just want to kind of See if I could glance and see how the fire situation is doing on that on the door frame. It has grown to that room. It's now this size. Okay, so it's it's engulfing the room essentially. Yep. Okay. All right. Sounds good. And then that 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 is my turn. All right, buzzer on. It's uh, here you go. What would you like to try to do? Let's see. What's the status of everything? Oh, shit. Ooh, uh... Sabrina is looking mighty bloodied and bruised. Mr. Sleeves is on death's door. He's, he's right at whatever gates. Either pearly or, you know, infernal. And that golem just looks mad. Is Sabrina's foot stuck in the golem's stomach? Ooh, Sabrina's half of her body is in the golem's foot and leg. I'm gonna try to take a shot and shoot off his leg. All right, go for it. See how this goes. Ooh, you just hit. You just hit him. To roll that damage and then I'll decide. You hit this golem for 13. It finally is looking a little worse for wear. And you have made it significantly easier for Sabrina to get out. But the leg is still attached. Instead of half of her body, it's more like she just has her foot stuck now. All right. Um, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Kind of convenient. Uh, I think that'll be my turn. All right. Sabrina, you've, you've had quite the turn of events now. Really? What would you like to do? I guess you would want to escape from this golem. Yes. Do I have to attack to do so? Give me a strength check. I got a 21. You are away from this golem and choose what... I assume you don't want to go into the room that's currently on fire. You can choose uh, no going out north or south if you want to get away um, from it. I'm going to go south. All right. Um, so next. Uh, so do I still have like turn left like to attack? Yes, if you want to. Okay. You can also still cast a spell if you want. Oh, I have spells. That's correct. Um, I think. Uh, uh, can I still use Searing Smite? Yeah, you didn't use a bonus action. You just use a movement, so you can if you want. Oh no, I meant. Do I still have it? Ooh, you do not. You missed. I see. Hmm. 
It doesn't look like I have any spell sees then. At least from what I'm looking at. You do know that this thing, the look on its face says it does not like fire that much. Yes. But do I have any other fire related spells is the real question. You still have, hmm. Just have Searing Smite, really. You can try to get, ooh. You can cast all that. You have two more left. Okay. So I'm gonna cast it. Okay, and then you're gonna try to hit it again? Yes. All right. So we're gonna, I rolled a five for damage. Uh, mm -hmm. And then hit. I'm gonna go with the long sword this time. Okay. Actually, no. Hmm. I, I feel like long sword is probably gonna do the most damage. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm gonna go for the long sword, and I'm gonna like try to like stab it in the core. In the core. Uh, okay. Yes. And uh. So I'm gonna roll the hit. I roll You're... an eight, but I'm aiming at the core. So it's like if I miss, wouldn't I like go off center, maybe? Your sword misses the core of the skull and just takes a chunk out of the floor. And it, the floor is on fire now. Wow. How is that even possible? You added Searing Smite. It's on fire. This is all wood. No, I mean, how is it possible that I missed that much? Uh, well, you are heavily bruised and battered, so you're not looking in the greatest of shapes. Okay, that makes sense, but... I think that's it for you. You can't really uh, do anything unless you do your action, bonus action, and movement. Yeah. But you did put more fear into that golem's uh, heart. Because there's fire Cute. now around it. So it has a couple of options. Now we go to Aidwin. Ah. <clears throat> well, seeing Aidwin seeing this thing kind of like being apprehensive about fire, I guess. Mm-hmm. He kind of like on one of his gauntlets, uh, like a, a small cannon kind of like flips out and I aim at it and I fire a, a fire bolt straight out. Okay. Of yeah. And hit. Certainly hits. Thunk. And it does uh, what is it? DD 10 of fire. 14. Jesus. Damage. Of fire damage. This thing looks singed now and the room that it's in is cur has currently added uh, more fire to it, and it looks fearful. And it actually uh, looks to you now in somewhat sort of fear. So, I attack it again. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to shoot it again. With my fireball. Ooh, uh, is that a cantrip or a spell? It is a cantrip. Okay, you hit it. Um, and it through. Ooh, 15. Uh, not looking great. This thing, uh, his body is starting to, like, crack and harden to where it's having trouble, like, moving. You could, you know, try to move, like, to not be in the open, if you want, because there's that captain looking right at you. Yeah, I was like... I was and that captain goes right thing. after you. Yeah, I was going for a whole thing of just like, alright, I'm gonna, like, create a bottleneck, but then, <laughs> or at least, like, try to get out of the house, but mm -hmm. 
you're right. I don't like this at all. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move myself kind of. <laughs> I kind of like roll slightly to the you know to cover myself on the the opening. You know, I kind of hunker behind there. So you decide to go into the house that's on fire, is what I'm understanding. Well, yeah, well, yeah, but like, <laughs> like kind of like against the opening, so that I'm just like just kind of behind cover slightly, just so that you know, I just I just got a, a freaking trident thrown at me, <laughs> so it's bad on all sides. But all right, let's stay here. That's it for you. Sabrina, I want you to give me a perception check. Sure. I got a 19. You see... something wicked come your way. In the form of a little goblin hag. Through the fire. That's so. You see it points its finger right at you. And says sisters. I found what I came for. And I need you to make me a constitution saving throw. With disadvantage. How do I do it with disadvantage? Just roll twice. Ooh. Oh, that's great. That's a good roll right Oh, now. you did a check. You did a check. So I set the... Um, you did a check. So on your character sheet where it says saving throws, go to where Khan is and then click that twice. Hey. You, did, you did a check instead of a saving throw. I see. Mm-hmm. Yo. Better. Sabrina, you feel something inside of you change. What? <laughs> you look down at your hand and your fingers start to turn green. And you look at this little goblin, and you see its fingers start to turn human. Mm hmm Is that so? That's the end of this little goblin's turn. And now it's uh, Sister Callista, the captain's turn. And once she sees this happen... She is going to. What she's got? She's got 30. She's going to book it all the way over here. And she yells at the goblin. Casa, rendezvous, Esmeralda, distraction, and that's going to be the end of her turn. Galandris, it is now up to you. Please don't let me turn into a goblin permanently. <laughs> we'll see. Tell me what you would like to do. You have that golem that's somewhat on fire. The goblin hag looks to be running to where the captain is. Where is the goblin? Again? The captain is here. Goblin here. Golem there. So if you move out from that door, you could probably take a shot at that little goblin if you want to. Yeah, 
Can I not climb to go on this cabin? Hey, can if you want, but I will tell you it is on fire, so you might want to not bump up a right against it. You can go into the trees if you want. I don't think I can. You could get some cover from the trees, like if you hide behind one of them. I'll say you can do that. Mm-hmm. Now go ahead. And then I'm gonna pass the sneering strike on the government. Okay. Four. Don't you uh, have to hit with a weapon? Oh, okay. Right. Seventeen. That just misses this little goblin. Oh. I guess that's um it for your turn. Yeah. That goblin does, I will note, that goblin does see where that arrow came from and looks back at you with malice. Sure. And it's now time for Ismerelda, the sister that's only been seen once. But she will pop out right there next to the captain, her other sister. And she will cast... A thing called watery sphere so she will cast that right on the goblin not the goblin the uh golem and all the fire on the floor and itself is gone now because the water has doused it. And the golem looks just a little bit more healthier than before. And that will be the end of her turn. The golem, no longer on fire and now worried about the floor being on fire looks down to Og and it will in fact use haste it has a plus two to its AC now of what it was All right. and it will come right over to you and it will for sure slam you once nice. for 18 points of bludgeoning damage. All right. And when it came over to you in the haste, it broke a part of the roof a little bit. So I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Let's see that constitution. Nine. You cannot regain those 18 hit points that have been lost to you. Okay. So you are down to 20, I believe. No, I had the uh, the additional 30 health points due to the circle Ooh. support thing. Yeah. Good so for you. It should, be, it should be total right now, I think, of 50. Oh. Nice. Yeah. Also, I think um, since he started, he moved into my circle of spores range, he takes a two times my uh, my my halo of spores damage. Okay. So let me do that really quickly. 
And then I cast it twice, I think. Oh, wait, I need to cast it again. Mm hmm. So, six. Uh, you see little shrooms growing in clay, which looks a little bit weird to you. Uh, yeah. Life finds a way. But it now has you in its grasp. Perfect. So. <laughs> Now up to Oliver. Oliver will. It sees the goblin. And it will. Hmm, it's go. He will teleport. Hmm. Oliver will teleport to right in front of the goblin hag. And he will. Hmm. What could he do? He's going to cast a uh, sapping sting, which will deal it six necrotic damage. Uh, hurts a little bit, but it's uh, largely fine after that. But Oliver really just did it to get into the goblin hag's way. Miss. Mr. Sleeves is uh still unconscious and still rolling death saving throws. But he succeeds, so he has two successes and one failure. And that's the end of uh, his turn and Og it's yours. You can have I, to break three. Can I ask an, an odd question? Would you say that this this golem is made of either dirt or stone? I would say it's a mixture, yes. Uh, of those two? Yes. So, can I call out to my people and say, aim for the heart as I cast Mold Earth on it, and then try to excavate, like, an area of its chest cavity? Give me... I want you to give me two checks here. Give me a nature check and then an arcana check. Okay. Uh, nature check. An arcana check. You open the exact spot to where this, the core of this golem is, to where its quote unquote heart is, and it's a little like ruby gem. Uh, you can hold that, but this is like your whole turn. You cannot yeah, move, yeah. no bonus. This is it. Yeah, no and you're, turn. you're using everything you got to hold this spot open. Got it. And whoever attacks it now has advantage on hitting its core. So if that's the end of your turn, that's Belgeron's. Yeah. And Belgeron, you see that core wide open for you. So. Well, let's shoot that cord then. Go for it. I'll use a dead eye shot. Mm-hmm. Ooh. You got advantage, remember? You roll one more time. You somehow just still miss this thing. Even though the core is white, it must be the fire, the water, all this chaos going around. It just distracted you just enough. To miss. I guess that's the end of my turn. <laughs> Rita, you're um not doing so hot, are you? 
I don't know. You... You look like you just got cursed by a... Goblin. But mm -hmm. on the bright side of things, this golem that's been terrorizing you and beating you up the whole time now has shown its weakness thanks to uh, Og's quick thinking. So what would you like to do? What was the weakness again? It's core. The core is wide open for you to hit. You get advantage on the attack, and if you hit it, there's a pretty good chance it might topple over. I see. I, I knew to hit the core before. But, um, let's see. For one last time, we're gonna go ahead and try our last, uh, Searing Smite of the day, right? Mm hmm We're gonna cast that. I roll a five for damage. Okay. And then, with my, um, I think I'm gonna... I think I'm gonna like try to stab it with my javelin. Or... Are you, are you sure you want to do it with your javelin? No. Can you stab it with your uh, with the long sword? You sure can. Okay, I'm gonna try stabbing it with the long sword. Um, I got a 17 for my first row. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're and gonna want to. Second... You're gonna so want to stick with your 17. Yeah, so you stick with the 17, right? Yep. You hit it? Uh, uh, what's the damage on that? I am going to... Thirteen. You have just hit the core in the exact right spot. That core shatters. This golem crumbles down into clay muck on the ground and it is defeated and dead and when it falls you just hear a loud boom and the room shakes and the foundation of the house shakes a little bit and the parts that were burning and are burning currently have started to fall over a bit it looks like this house might uh topple in on itself see uh is there anything else i can do on my turn you can move if you want to move to mr sleeves or outside of the house you can yeah i think i will how far can i move uh what's your uh movement speed uh walk 30 feet per second or 30 uh, feet, i don't know yeah you can move 30 feet away so let's see um, how do I draw the line again? Uh, with the little ruler icon. Just click that. Somehow I don't see a ruler on my screen. Oh, wait. I think I see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to move Look. right up to the goblin hag? Yeah. I got to corner her. Go for it. Move right up there. Am I, am I walking through the wall or is there a hole there? There's a hole there, I think. Mm -hmm. Should work. Yep, that's all you can uh, really do. And we're done. That's the end of your turn, so... Aidwin, this house is collapsing now. You might want to get out. Oh, heck. That golem is dead. Uh, you see these sisters run away or are retreating, so... Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay, we're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to, I wanna get, like, right up on them. I'm gonna move, like, here. Okay. And I'm going to, having seen them, everyone keeps trying to run away. <laughs> um, I'm gonna cast that. So it is uh, a 20 foot kind of square to kind of catch both of them. Mm hmm. Uh, Difficult terrain, lightly obscured the area. 
And you're just going to cast a word that hits both of them? Yeah. Okay. Would that be the end of yours? They have to save whenever they try to get out of it. And it's a strength save. But your spell save DC is like 15. Just to FYI, everybody, the f the webs are flammable. So, just saying. Hmm. Uh, All right. Yeah, no, that, that's it. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see into your turn. Now the hags. The hag will... Hmm. What shall the hag do? Hmm. <laughs> it will cast Polymorph. Uh, make a wisdom saving throw, Sabrina. Okay. I got a night queen. You got lucky, and you feel no more adverse effects of what happened. The hag looks pissed off, but she now needs to run away. Do I still have green hands? You can make an opportunity attack if you want. Um, okay. I'll attack. How far away is she? She's pretty far away. Uh, you, so I... We're just going to say you can attack her while she's running away. Okay. Oh, so also, I'm going to... Uh, an FYI, so if, 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 the, the web is, it, it is 20 feet, the, the web. So if she heads in that direction, she, uh, I'm pretty sure, is going to be running into web. Okay. Web? That's it. it would be Where did you put this. the web exactly on? Right here? I would put it, you know what, let me just draw a little... Then I need to bring myself in. Oh, wait, no, that's 20. Yeah, 20 feet, 20. Oh, so it's actually larger than that. Damn. Okay. So, um, Sabrina, did you make a opportunity attack? I'm going to go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw for that hag. Sabrina. Yeah. Make an opportunity attack. Okay. I'm going to attempt to slash at the, um, at the, the hag mm -hmm. with my long sword. Mm -hmm. I got a 17 to hit. So does that hit? That just hits. Sweet. I got a six damage. Okay. Uh, 
you just uh, nicked her on the way by. And you know what? Oliver will go ahead and make an attack too. He'll make an opportunity attack since she passed by. But he unfortunately missed. Right, she, this little goblin hag has somehow been able to make it through the web. So, that's the end of this goblin hag's turn. The captain's turn, he will move up. Actually, nope, she will not move up because she has to make a drink saving throw. What's the spell save? 14? It's a dex 15. Dex 15. He makes it. But they are in the still web area. They are just not harmed by it, like, or impeded by it. And the captain will decide that enough is enough. She raises her trident up in the air. And she will call lightning right down on Oliver. Ooh. Oliver... Uh, gets hit with so much lightning damage, he has two death failures. So he's knocked unconscious, and he's one more failure, and he's dead permanently. And now it's Galandris' turn. So, Galandris, you have... I'm not sure if they are in range still for you to hit or try to. They are. Alright. Uh, try to hit them. I'm going to use my hunter's mark on the goblin. Mm -hmm. And then using my heavy cross rope. All right. So okay. Thirteen. That misses. It gets the heavy crossbow bolt gets caught up in the webs. And uh, misses the hack. And then I'm gonna try to climb this tree and, and then look around. Okay. So, to clear up this one. Yeah, let me just uh, unveil that area for you. And that's my turn. All right. It is now Esmeralda's turn. Esmeralda will make a strength saving throw. He will not make it. Ooh, let's see. To actually make a strength check against oh strength check okay so strength check and not strength saving throw gotta make sure 
not that it's much better. It's confusing because, like, on the spell it says dex, but in the description it says strength check. I don't know. So, yeah, it's like a strength check. Well, uh, unfortunately, Brian, she gets out of that. But it's still heavy terrain and diffi well, t difficult terrain for her. So she will move up to her sisters. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> she says, girls, it's time to go. And she will cast Dimension Door. She grabs, grabs both of them, and you see the little goblin goes into a bag of holding that she has to where she can transport her uh, captain sister, Callista, and the she can essentially transport two people at once with Dimension Door. The door pops up. It's this, like, watery, like, Atlantic-looking door. She passed, She backs through with it and says, see you later, sweeties. You see far away them pop up on that ship and it's 500 feet away. So the sisters are now gone from the map and combat is over. So these sisters have gone away. Is there anything any of you like to do? Uh, I'd like to see if I can heal Oliver. Uh, speaking of which, uh, do you have any healing spells or anything? Health potions, anything like that? I do. I'm pretty sure. If you don't, I can I can cast a healing spell for him. What You're... if we both cast healing spells? <laughs> he doesn't need that much health. Uh, you, that Mr. Sleeves, by the way, is still dying over there, so you might want to... <laughs> you have two people that are dying <laughs> currently. Alright, fine. I'll go ahead and cast a healing spell. Okay, <laughs> so I gotta go heal Mr. Sleeves because I'm supposed to be taking care of him. Like, I'm obligated to save him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess I'll go over to Mr. Sleeves and I'll use, uh, was it healing hands? Yeah, should be. Okay. Uh, I'll use Does that. I have a healing cantrip because mine is actually a spell slot. <laughs> I think she, you have a spell slot, right? Uh, Sabrina? Have a what? Let me see. I'll just like to see what you can do. I used all three of my spell slots. I think. Ooh. Oh, no, you have uh, Lay on Hands. That's what you have. Mm -hmm. You have Lay on and that's Hands. Separate, right? Uh -huh. Yep. Okay. So and you have I will uh, use... 20 HP that you can give out. And you could probably just go ahead and do that to Oliver and Mr. Seeds and give them 10 each if you want. Okay. I'll, give, just take care of I'll that. give each of them 10. Yeah. I'll do that. Uh, you notice when you do that to Mr. Sleeves, he starts to feel a little bit more froggy instead of not whenever you heal him up and he's not at death's door. Interesting. Will he just turn into a human if he dies? He was looking less froggy, not more human. Interesting. Maybe he turns into a toad. Um, you, by the way, uh, look down at your hands for me real quick. Uh, okay. You, your hands, specifically your fingernails, are a little bit more jagged and not as perfect as they once were. And if you look long enough at it, you can see it start to spread just a tiny bit. Oh. And the last thing you saw from that goblin was you saw some golden hair start to sprout on her head. I see. Is there anything 
anyone else would like to do look around i mean you see the ship like so far away but it's already it's already starting to walk with its robotic legs away from you and it's heading oh. towards the mountains can i go inspect the area where they just kind of like disappear through the portal just see if i see anything uh you just see a bun you just see wet ground that's what you, oh. you see actually you know what you see wet ground and you see traces of that red crystal okay all right and the uh ground looks wet and it kind of looks withered a little bit like it's almost dead and dying from what just happened Oliver comes up to everyone, uh, asks how you are all faring. He cannot remember what just happened, so he has no idea that he basically almost died. He kind of blanked out there after getting electrocuted by lightning. And he said, well, they're, they're heading where we got to go. And that's the mountains, and we got to go to the Hall of Fent grotto there in the mountains so that's not great do you think we should try to catch up with their ship or do you think we should go straight towards the destination they we're all heading in the same direction so and they got quite a lead on us but they do have to rest and so do we so I suggest we just make a little camp and try to heal up a bit, and then we just gun it for the mountains tomorrow morning. That sounds like a decent idea. It's not a bad idea. And he said there's like a there's like a little city up ahead that I'm vaguely familiar with, and I can try to see if we can maybe cut it off that ship or catch up with it before it reaches the grotto. Is everyone on board with that? Uh, you yeah, see... I don't have a better plan. <laughs> you see Mr. Sleeves gets up and he looks in the direction of that ship and he says, I'm going to get him. <laughs> and Mr. Sleeves leaves. He leaves. He goes right on ahead. Uh, he starts walking away. Excuse yeah. me? Well, he walked, if he walked in that direction, he got caught in web. Because that web, web is still there. <laughs> so he's not going anywhere. All right, we'll do that. We'll do that. If that web is still there, we'll do that. So let's see. He's got to make us. Where the hell are you going? Mr. Sleeps is stuck in the web and he's, uh, he makes the sound like a little frog makes whenever it's like annoyed and pissed off. And he's just having a full on temper tramp <laughs> right now. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Sleeps, you have like 10 hit points or you look like you have. Very little health, so you're not going out. You're not. Going He's out. rolling around so much that he makes himself into a little like spider web cocoon, and he can't move anymore. <laughs> He's like, "Can someone just hand me a cigarette, please?" No, <laughs> none of us have cigarettes. Can you just get it out of my pocket? It just light me one. All right, I'll move. I'll move over there and and grab this man a cigarette. Uh huh. And then I will go ahead and yeah, and light up for him. For it? Yeah. All right. Is it yep. another pocket? <laughs> there you go, Mister Sleeves. And I ask him, do you have any way that we can beat them to the punch? Maybe get there before they can. I sure don't. <sighs> Brilliant. <laughs> he said, "Well, yeah, I don't know. You know what? Actually, Mister Sleeves is going to make a history check." Ooh, okay. We can make... I don't want to do this, but we can make a little detour and we can go 
to my home in the swamp. And we can take a pass there to cut them off. You'd go to your home in the swamp and make a pass there? Yes. The hmm. the small catch to that is uh, I didn't leave the best impression when I left the house. And my home is currently all against me. So the only catch there is that we might have to fight our way through there. What's the point of going through if we have to fight people? That's and the only way. What the hell did you do? Look, we can either go to the city that Oliver said he's vaguely familiar with. And we might be able to get something there. But that's a small chance. Or we could go to the swamp. And I know for sure there's a passage way to cut them off. It's, it's just there might be a little ritual or fighting that we have to do. Can we just hide you? And just go through? You know, just pretend that we happened upon You do have a bag of holding. You can stuff a you can stuff a creature in a bag of holding for five minutes. Damn five minutes. <laughs> or we'll just can't you don't you can't you disguise yourself, Mr. Sleeves? Can just or, or something? I think what we could do is I could hide in the bag of holding and one of you can act as like our ambassador or liaison from Sigil. And once we get the like the okay to go through, we just book it through there, through town, and then head straight for the passageway. Yeah, that might be better instead of you causing trouble. But that's five minutes, and after that five minutes, I have to pop out or else I start to die. I think we can make it work. All right. If everyone's short, short rest before we, <laughs> I have no no complaints to this plan. I'm gonna say we're gonna do a long rest. Everyone gets to do a long rest. Uh, I guess you set up campfire for the night next to the burning house on fire. Because <laughs> let's say, do we need a campfire or do we just like? I guess you can pull any like um, bedding that's salvageable or whatever to make it a little bit extra comfier. But you guys are all sleeping for the night. Uh. Is everyone fine with? I mean, Belzron, I guess you could stay watch since you don't have to sleep. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at the pretty fire. And we're going to do one last thing that none of you are going to notice. All right. Mr. Sleeves uses the ashes. Of the cigarette slowly burn away that webbing and loosen himself up a bit. And that's where we're going to end off today. Hmm.